What is dark matter? Where did this enigmatic term come from? Well, the first thing you should come to terms with is that the mathematicians inferred the existence of these hypothetical particles indirectly. They observed the erratic behavior of visible systems such as stars and galaxies. Imagine a rotating galaxy. You would think that the individual stars that comprise the galaxy travel pretty much like the planets in our solar system. The farther out you go, the slower the planets go. The inner planets travel swiftly. The outer ones lag far behind. Surprisingly, that's not how the stars orbit a galaxy. A galaxy more or less rotates as if it were made of a single piece. The stars at the edge of a galaxy rotate more or less in step with those close to its center. A galaxy rotates like a figure skater. The hands and legs of a skater do not lag behind and wrap around her body. They turn with the body. This realization might seem trivial to the untrained eye but it is actually quite astonishing. It means that the stars on the outer edge have to travel at unbelievable speeds in order to keep in step with those on the inside. The astronomers refer to this phenomenon as the galaxy rotation problem. What would cause the stars on the outer edge to travel so fast? The mathematicians reasoned that this phenomenon could only be caused by mass, and it is only mass that they ever considered. The astronomers measured the speeds of stars, plotted the curve, and concluded that a galaxy must have more and more mass, farther and farther from its center, in order for the stars on its periphery to travel so fast. They refer to this elusive mass as dark matter. If the velocity of outer stars were as great as uh, it is measured to be, those stars do not have enough centripetal force to maintain them in orbit. And so we reached the conclusion that a galaxy must contain matter that we cannot see. And it can't all be accumulated in the middle, otherwise the um, velocities of the outer stars would fall off as the distance from the centre increased, just as, they, just as planets' velocities fall off as the distance from the sun increases. In fact, the matter must be spread throughout the galaxy, possibly in the form of what's called halos. And it's that matter that we cannot see that has been given the name dark matter. The peculiar thing about dark matter is that it is extremely heavy, totally invisible, and eerily transparent. Kind of like the uh, spirits of traditional religions. You can see the stars in the background behind any galaxy, as if dark matter did not exist at all. More basic yet, why isn't dark matter sprinkled between the Earth and the Moon? If these extremely heavy particles are everywhere, they should be found between the Earth and the Moon as well. But if there were such particles flying around in the vicinity of Earth, not only would the astronauts collide against them, but these extremely heavy spirits would upset all of our calculations. Gravity would not work at all according to any of the equations that we regularly use today. It makes you wonder whether the mathematicians have done nothing more than invent the ghost that fits nicely into their equations. This inexistent spirit is what the astronomers are spending their time and your money trying to find it with their telescopes.
Is dark matter a reality? Has it been proven to exist? But just exactly what dark matter is, and indeed whether it exists at all, we have yet to discover. Dark matter has not yet been directly observed, but scientists believe that it is likely to be real, mostly because the other options have been ruled out. So, it makes you wonder if dark matter is not a reality and it has not been proven to exist, why is it being sold to the public as a done deal? Why do all articles appearing in respectable journals and popularization magazines present dark matter as if it were a fact? And if dark matter is invisible and translucent, how do the mathematicians ever intend to prove its existence? Under the rope model of light and gravity, the galaxy rotation problem is a no-brainer. It's kindergarten stuff. We begin by stating the first principle of physics. Physics requires an object. You can't do physics without an object. Now that we have squared that away, we merely have to determine what invisible objects underlie gravity and electromagnetism. According to mathematical physics, all particles in the universe are independent, discrete entities. The rope hypothesis proposes instead that all atoms are interconnected by a rope-like mediator. It is the twine threads that comprise the electromagnetic rope that produce light and gravity. If every atom is connected to all others, then every star is physically bound to all others as well. Each star is also bound to the gases, planets, and other celestial objects between them. The entire network of interconnected matter contributes to the integrity of the galaxy. This is the reason a galaxy does not break apart when it rotates. Thus, when we ponder the structure of a galaxy, we should not view it as consisting of discrete stars and planets that are magically attracted to each other by a concept called mass. We must visualize a galaxy in a different light. A galaxy resembles the spokes of a wheel, or the hands on a clock. The bottom of the spoke rotates in step with the top of the spoke, and the bottom of the hand on the clock orbits in step with the sections on the top. Why? Because the two ends are connected. Likewise, the only reason the stars at the edge of a galaxy rotate in step with stars near the center is that they are connected. A galaxy rotates like the spokes of a wheel or like the hands on a clock. Now let's factor the galactic magnetic field. The mathematicians refer to the lines that protrude out of the center of a galaxy as jets. The astronomers visualize these jets as consisting of particles coming out of a grand celestial volcano powered by magical black holes. Under the rope hypothesis, these so-called jets are the threads that comprise the galactic magnetic field. These threads sweep up the center of a galaxy and cascade down its sides. These sweeping walls of threads maintain the integrity of a galaxy. Therefore, a galaxy does not rotate exactly like a flat disk. And the analogy that we mentioned earlier about the skater does not quite do it justice. 
A galaxy is better likened to a carousel, a merry-go-round. The stars at the outer edge are connected to those near the center. The countless threads that comprise the magnetic field now sweep down and further help to maintain the integrity of the galaxy. If we had the eyes of God, we would see all the stars in a galaxy, bound to all others, being swept through by the countless threads that comprise its magnetic field. The reason we can see the stars in the background, behind a galaxy, and the reason that astronauts do not collide with heavy, invisible dark matter is that there are no such spirits in our universe.